updates. Number one update is on the whole Gucci blackface um, uh, debacle that kind of rolled out over the last few days. I obviously have made some comments about it on Monday. And I think um, having kind of thought about it a bit more and really meditated on what's kind of going on um, and just kind of thought about it a bit more, I don't... I just don't, I don't know how um, constructive, I don't know how um, worthwhile, constructive, um, responsible it is to counsel Gucci for the blackface, you know, debacle that's gone on. I sometimes think like not all actions, should, you, don't, you shouldn't be judged for all your actions, you may be judged for the body of work that you've kind of produced thus far. I think Gucci, since they've hired Alessandro Michele, um, they've kind of gone from strength to strength. Of course, he's kind of restored the house and kind of brought it back to the levels of influence that it might have had when um, they were under the helm of Tom Ford. And he's really kind of restored this great feeling um, around Gucci, a feeling of nostalgia, a feeling of opulence, a feeling of accessibility. Um, and for that, you know, he's obviously kind of leaned in mostly with the kind of hip hop crew or hip hop crowd or hip hop culture or black culture. And we've kind of taken them in and we've kind of kind of, you know, really um, embraced them for everything they kind of represent. And of course, along the way, they kind of had a couple of missteps, you know, the whole Dapper Dan situation. But they quickly rectified that. They gave him his own atelier. Um, he kind of worked basically in-house with Gucci, but has his own atelier in Harlem that he kind of runs, uh, similar to the, the stuff that he was doing in the 80s. Um, so essentially, they've kind of corrected those wrongs. They've kind of, you know, they are very much for gifting and dressing various hip-hop acts that we know and love um, i'm sure um behind the scenes they probably allow give people discounts and stuff so they do a lot of great work right stuff that they don't need to do because we've seen many a luxury brands who've kind of gone out of their way to kind of um distance themselves to be associated with hip-hop right they don't want any active association don't want any active collaboration but gucci have really embraced hip-hop community for the most part so i think their actions are quite genuine right i think they are really about the culture and I think the blackface jumper is, if anything, just a misstep on their part because they don't probably have anyone in their offices who is of, um, who comes from the culture, who understands what it means, the significance of it, right? I don't think they necessarily get it. Um, again, I don't think um, there's some comments out there saying, no, black people are too sensitive. Um, we complain about everything and everything. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think sometimes you need to call things out for exactly what they are. But I also think sometimes, too, things can just happen that don't necessarily have the intentions that you may think they have intentions of. Right? That jumper could just have been a jumper they thought looked cool. It could just be an extension of the Banaclava ski mask thing that they do, right? It could just be that. We just we don't, we actually don't know what the intentions are. But I think in nowadays, you know, with the whole, with how we are on social media, there is a tendency to maybe cancel people or cancel brands. But I think Gucci, in this case, probably shouldn't be canceled because by and large, they have been a big supporter of the hip-hop industry. And I also think they addressed it in a really good way. They responded quite quickly. They apologized. They took down the the item. Um, one of their chairmen made a long, lengthy statement, kind of, you know, really um, apologize for what happened. And now um, Alessandro, Alessandro Michele himself made a statement now, released a statement um, to his staff that I'm going to read out loud that kind of um, echoes the same sort of thoughts. Um, and it says the following. Duh, 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 duh. Dear colleagues, I have I ha I feel the need to write to you all um, these few words to give you a name, to give a name to the pain of these days. Um um, my own and that of the people who saw in one of my creative projects an intolerable insult. It's important to me to let you know that the jumper actually had a very specific reference, completely different from what was described instead, which is uh, which we can understand. It was a tribute to Lee Barry, um, to his camouflage art, to his ability to challenge bourgeoisie conventions and to conformism, to his eccentric as a performer and to his extraordinary vo vocation as a masquerader meant as a hymn to freedom. Oh, this makes sense. And the little Barry, the kind of, you know, how he kind of did that really messy lipstick stuff where it went kind of over the edges. This is before Kylie and Kendall, by the way. Um, maybe, do you think the two conversations were really Barry? I doubt it. But anyway, um, the fact that contrarily to my intentions at Turtleneck, Jumper evoked a racist imagery causes me the greatest grief. But I'm aware that sometimes our actions can end up with the causing unintentional effects. It is therefore necessary to take in full accountability for these, eff for, for these effects, which is, you know, admirable in that regard. For this reason, our company immediately apologized and withdrew the garment that produced such controversies. As you may have read from Marco in his letter, we are putting in place a series of immediate actions across the world that will increase exclusivity, diversity, participation, and cultural awareness at any level and in any workplace. We are truly committed to facing what happened as a crucial learning moment for everybody. It is always thought 
Now, the inclusivity thing, I'm not that, you know, I don't know. It's a, it, it can get it, it can come across a bit heavy handed. I don't really know what they're gonna what are they gonna do? Are they gonna start hiring black people in their stores and stuff actively only to kind of you know increase inclusivity and diversity? I'm not really sure that's the right thing because it's not it's not just a black issue. It's an issue of um, cultural awareness. So not all black people are that culturally aware, or not all black people are are that bothered or that are that offended when they see stuff like that, right? Um, so it's about including the right type of voices in the conversation, but more so more so than that. It's about that cultural... It's about understanding what's happening now because I think what we're seeing now in the last come few years or last decade or so with the prevalence of hip-hop kind of growing and growing, we're seeing this influence that these various different art forms or these cultures have within commerce, right? We're seeing how important... We're seeing the effects of it more viscerally now than we, we probably understood in previous times. Maybe because the internet, maybe because of social media, I don't know what it is, but we're seeing how influential influencers artists djs wherever they may be special um, um uh socialized whoever these people are we're seeing what influence they actually have on commerce directly right we're seeing that if amber rose wears this top and she posts a, a, a unique link of it to fashion nova and people click it they can see they can track how much uh traction amber rose takes to their website they can track how quickly amber rose's top sells out on their website we can see it now black and white oh shit this person is really culturally relevant right mm-hmm. we need to tap into them we need to kind of associate with them we need to line up with them so i think because of that there's even more responsibility on our end as buyers and as consumers right or people in the culture to be very cognitive and be very aware of who we are giving attention to and who we're spending our money with so if they do anything that kind of like rubs us off the wrong way the best way to protest, the best way to kind of make them understand what, or to make them take notice, is to stop buying what they're making, right? But I also think within that process, there needs to be understanding on the brands end of things. So understand that if you're directly marketing to a, set, a, a particular demographic, a particular kind of cultural base, a particular uh, a particular subset of people, you need to have those people included, right, in the messaging, right, in the design in the iteration process whatever you're doing with the consultation you they, they need to be consulted some way or the other they have to be included in the conversation you can't just be throwing out shit to people and not having them involved in it. it just doesn't make sense and that's the only way that's the only i think fashion is the only place it always happens right where they kind of you know when, when skateboarding was the in thing they were pushing all these fucking cringeworthy skateboard editorials right that had no basis in skateboarding, right? That were completely toned there. That just had this hot model standing next to their skateboarder of choice, usually some dude from Palace, right? That was just fucking gob shit. It just didn't make any sense, right? But in the moment you start including people from that scene into the process of design, into the process of consultation, the process, the effects or the end product become a little bit more polished. They become a little bit more nuanced. They become a little bit more on point. That's what happens. So it only serves a brand um better to include people like us in the conversation people that give a shit about the music people that give a shit about the culture and the moment they don't is when we get these black face jumpers so for the inclusivity and diversity conversations that are included there it's not just a quota thing it's not just about it's not just about it's about reflecting your customer base and if you're going to directly market to them bring them into the conversation don't just have them on the outside and that's what a lot has been happening in the fashion industry right a lot of like um gatekeepers and people just trying to you know uh, make sure they they're they stay inside of a job a lot of nepotism right hiring of the same people from the same scene for this for a, a particular family name but i think it's slowly but surely changing you're seeing even with the street style pictures right the people that are featured on the street style pictures you know they look like me and you right they're they're from all over the fucking world right they're wearing brands they're smashing brands together they're, they're head to toe in different things you would never expect them to be in and I think they need more. We need to see them more, including more in the converse, in the kind of design iteration process than just sitting on the runway or just standing outside of a show or walking down the street. That's all well and good. I'm happy that that's happening, but we need to see more active participation on that end. So I'm hoping what Gucci is doing isn't just going to be hiring more black and brown people in their stores, right? I'm hoping that it's going to be a more of an active role given, given black and brown people who are involved in making your brand hot and more of an active role in what goes into making your brand in what goes into the campaigns what goes into the editorials what goes into the runway what goes into what makes it onto a store what makes it online what how you do your merchandising get those voices involved and then you'll avoid these blackface conversations that's all it takes really because what you see when you see the blackface thing it's not that it's offensive it's that 
it tells you that there's no one in that company that understood that that could be offensive. That's the only issue. It's like, fucking hell. There was no one in that company. No one. Or no one would have loud enough voice. Because you see, for sure, we know Alessandro Michele isn't a racist. We know he doesn't have those bigoted views because he's very, he's been very open, very aware and very um, happy to kind of tap into that world, right? To have to be associated with the names that are in that world. He's kind of actively gone out of his way to do it. So we know that's not his intentions, but, you know, it means that in the whole company, there's no one really that looks like us that's there. And that's kind of, and that's a sad thing considering just how how important of a customer base or of an influence we are to their overall market or to their overall r- r- revenue stream but anyway the, the 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 statement continues um i've always thought to i've always thought to grant myself and any other the possibility to be different i've hardly been through i've i've hardly been through this fight all over my personal huh? i've hardly been through this i've hardly been through this fight all over my personal life and i later brought it into my work here i was always tried to give citizenships right to the traditional marginalized to those who felt unrepresented to those that the history silenced and made by and made believe they were worthless my aim in which personal and political are intimately woven has always been to turn um the pain into a chant therefore i've always worked to let alternative imaginaries loaded with joyful inclusions emerge imagine imageries able to celebrate diversity in every form imageries able to empower images to favor empowerment and self-determination process this is who i am and these are the things i believe in i really shelter the suffer of i really shelter the suffer of all i have offended and i feel heartfelt sorry for this hurt i hope i can rely on the understanding of those who know me and can lodge a constant tension towards the celebration of diversity and that's always shaped my work this is only celebration i'm willing to stand for that's a great apology and i'm i'm, I'm sure for for sure that alessandro michele is very sincere in what he's saying i'm sure he's and i'm and i would i would say his actions really prove that you know he's about the culture i just think this is a misstep um for the most part i don't think we should kind of cancel gucci but again i just think it's a wake-up call for the fashion industry in general just to address these obvious blind spots right where they don't include people in the conversation that they're addressing to that's the problem i think everyone had with vetema in the later years i think the first couple of collections when they were first burst onto the scene it was all well and good to see a completely white cast of models right and to be honest i didn't even notice right um because they were, they were representing a particular kind of aesthetic, right? It came from a particular place, right? Um, them that's from Georgia, um, Eastern Bloc, right? There's that particular harsh um, Soviet influence seeping through the brand. And, you know, by and large, I would assume you probably didn't grow up with a lot of people from different places of the world or, or who didn't, he didn't grow up with people that looked different than what he looked like, right? So I can imagine those first couple of questions really did echo where he was coming from. But then as soon as Vettema started picking up, and then you saw people that look like me wearing it, right? Um, or you saw Asian people wearing it, who are probably the biggest kind of um, consumers of the brand by and large. If you click um, Vetema uh, hashtags on Instagram, you're only going to see black and black and Asian people. Like that's it, right? Um, wearing a brand, it got a little bit tone deaf. It got a little bit. It didn't really make sense when they weren't including those faces in the catwalk right because a catwalk runway show from my from what i think of it it's like a living lookbook right you are essentially trying to give you're trying to trying to provide a visual imagery a kind of you know a moving picture of what these clothes may look like on the person that wants to buy them right and usually you want to see someone that looks like you're on a runway or somebody you want to emulate look like you're on a runway and the easy way to tap into that if you're a brand is to just kind of you know tap into the consumer base that kind of want to wear your product and put it out there so you can kind of build this kind of oh my god i need that thing i need that thing in my wardrobe so if it's my one doing it that's why people kind of got a bit annoyed i wasn't really annoyed by it just because i was annoyed because of the whole like oh let's just include black people for, for the sake of it or asian people for the sake of it no i'll just include i'll just annoy for the sake of you know, these are the people that are actually buying into your brand. Why not have them on the runway? It just didn't make any sense. Because obviously, I'm, I'm from the streetwear world, where for the most part, um, streetwear brands, for their lookbooks and their product shots, they usually just use their friends, right? And their friends usually kind of, you know, they're from all over the world, right? They cover, it's like the United Colors of Benetton, most streetwear brands, right? Um, and it only makes sense, right? Because, you know, by and large, kids that are into streetwear don't really come from one place, right? They come from all over the place. So it I've never, ever not seen um different colors different races different heights different genders on runway shows on collection so when a company when a company that Vitamo started that obviously had a lot of street wear influenced um um positionings or products and stuff and the way they approach things and the customers are buying them were from a wholly wide swath of socioeconomic 
platform. It only made sense to kind of include them. And when they didn't, they kind of, you know, left a sour taste in their mouth. But Vettemont did good and they kind of corrected course. They included people on the runway. Everything was kind of forgiven. So I, I think in this case, Gucci need to be afforded the same kind of um, room to grow and to apologize for and to kind of move forward and to learn from and hopefully this is a learning experience hopefully we do see more of an active representation inside the design studio inside all these things because you know there are people out there that would want to work for gucci probably might not have the connections or might not have the in to go in there but they, they need to be given a platform to kind of go in and hopefully we see that going forward um again i'd, I'd say alessandro isn't a racer i wouldn't say he's a bigger in any kind of way I just think it's one of those missteps that happens in a company when you don't you don't really have anyone in there that is culturally aware, um, which is a shock really to consider, you know, it's a big luxury fashion house, but you know, not everyone can be aware of all things. So let's give them a let's let's give them the benefit of the doubt and hope it was just a one off thing and hope that with kind of, you know, with this consultation I think that Dapper Dan's gonna have with um the Gucci CEO that's coming up in a few weeks and hopefully with some of these changes they want to enact, we see some change coming up. Sh-